Dear esteemed guests, on behalf of Dr. Muhammad Al-Ali, CEO of Trends Research and Advisory, I would like to welcome you all to this event. Talking to you from Sharm el-Sheikh, Co-op 27. Thank you for joining us. My name is Sultan al rabi and I am the Head of Economic Studies section at Trends Research and Advisory, and I'll be moderating today's topic. Titled, Clean Energy Transition as a Way to Counter Greenhouse Effect. The United Nations Conference of Parties is an annual summit that gathers various experts, world leaders, and governments from around the globe for the sole reason of finding a solution to reduce and maybe one day reverse the effects of climate change. Clean energy covers a wide range of environmentally friendly energy sources. We hope that this dialogue will lead to a clear vision about the relationship between the transition to clean energy and the protection of the global climate by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, with that, I would like to, under, uh, to introduce the main speaker in today's conversation, Mr. Amjad Abdullah, who is the head of partnerships at International Renewable Energy Agency. He has worked extensively both domestically and internationally on climate change. Uh, renewable energy and sustainable development for over 25 years. Mr. Abdullah is also the author and contributing author to several reports of high international and national significance, including the reports of IPCC. Mr. Abdullah, welcome and the panel is yours. Thank you Thank very you much, uh, Sultan. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to be here. Um, uh, I know it's late in the in the day, but I thought you know I uh, I think it would be great to just to share some of the perspectives from um, the arena uh, what we're doing. Um, as you may know, that uh, International Renewable Energy Agency uh, World Energy Transition Outlook uh, Beto 2022, over 90 percent of the solutions to keep global temperature rise 1.5 degrees by mid-century involve renewable energy through direct supply, electrification, energy efficiency, green hydrogen, bioenergy combined with carbon capture and storage. Mm -hmm. We're not ruling anything. Um, the report further highlights that the energy transition investments will have to increase at least by 30% over planned investments to a total of 131 trillion between now and 2015. Significant amount a transformed energy sector will have 122 million jobs by 2050. Renewable energy jobs alone will account for more than a third. The report also further highlights, uh, despite some of this progress, the energy transition is far from being on track. Mm -hmm. And radical action is required, and it's uh, to put it on current trajectory. Achieving the 2050 climate targets depending, depends on uh, sufficient actions by 2030. So we need to reduce the curve. With uh, the coming eight or oh, now it's seven years being a critical for accelerating the renewable energy based transition. Any near term shortfall in action will further reduce the chance of staying the path to 1.5 degree Celsius climate goals. Accelerated actions is a no regret strategy and when carefully implemented allows a realization of the benefits of a just and inclusive energy transition. Just to highlight some of the few points, um, the largest energy consumers and carbon emitters will have to implement the most ambitious plans and investments by 2030. This will require ongoing beyond long-term decarbonization commitments and setting out concrete operational targets, plans and policies for the short and medium term by the most emitting countries, G20 and G7 countries. They will have a significant role in leading the global energy transition efforts at the international level. Funds and knowledge must be made available to least developed and small island nations to advance the quest for an inclusive and more equitable world. Ramping up renewables together with an aggressive energy efficiency targets is the most realistic pathway to have 
by 2030 as recommended by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in the recent reports. In the power sector, renewables are the fastest and cheaper to deploy than the alternatives. But, not, but to meet the IPCC goal, renewable estimates the annual addition of the renewable power capacity will have to be three times the current rate of development. Such as an increase is possible if the right conditions are in place. Technology specific targets and policies are specially needed to support the less mature technologies such as ocean energy. Renewable based electricity is now the cheaper power option in most regions around the world. IRENA shows that the global weighted average levelized cost of electricity from newly commissioned utility scale solar, solar, solar photovoltaic PV projects fell by 85% between 2010 and 2020. The corresponding cost reduction for con concentrated solar power were 68% onshore wind, 56% and offshore wind, 40%, 48%. As a result of renewables are already the default option for capacity additions in the power sector in almost in all countries across the globe. And they are dominated they dominated current investments. Solar and wind technologies have consolidated their dominance over time and with the recent increase in fossil fuel prices, the economic outlook for renewable power is even better. Uh, the IRENA's veto shows also the holistic approach for serious investments and international cooperations the energy transition can be a means to increase the job, to inclusive economy and a more equitable world, creating around 85 million jobs by 2030 alone. But in the end, it is a political will and resolve that will shape the transition path and determine whether it will lead to a more inclusive, equitable, stable world. Increasing ambitions in the NDCs made under the 2015 Paris uh, Climate Goal must be firm enough to provide certainty of direction and guidance on investment strategies. The agreement on the Glasgow Climate Pact requested that the parties revisit, the uh, revisit and strengthen the 2030 targets in the NDCs by end of this year. And uh, as you may have seen the synthesis report of the NDCs, only 29 countries have submitted the new revised NDCs. If we are to stay in line with the 1.5 degree targets, we need to revise and we need to come up with a more ambitious targets. IRENA socio-economic analysis also shows that progressive policy and regulatory measures generate a greater benefit from the energy transition. A 1.5 degree scenario can result in different socio-economic outcomes depending on variations in international cooperation, carbon pricing, progressive fiscal measures, and other government programs, enabling a rapid transition that compiles with climate goals requires a political commitment to support higher levels of international cooperation. By 2030, international climate collaboration should dramatically increase from the current levels. There is no other choice. Mm -hmm. Introducing these high levels of international cooperation and more progressive distributional policies will ensure a fair and just inclusive transition, aiming to minimize current inequalities and international cooperation can support the most vulnerable countries in making the necessary transition to build capacity in key areas such as institutions, economic structures, risk management, social cohesions, research and innovations that's very critical for your organization. Mm -hmm. And I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Abdullah. I'd, I I have just a couple of questions. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned the plan for 2030, and I just wanted to ask from your own perspective: Do you think it's a tangible plan? Do you think it's achievable with the current uh, uh, current uh, uh, people that are working uh, on this uh, plan globally? The fundamentals here is that there needs to be adequate and predictable financial resources. Mm -hmm. And technologies are mature enough. I think what is, is lacking, as I said, is a political will. Because people are reluctant to change their yes. practices. I think one has to convince people. I think this is what is needed. Mm -hmm. Education, awareness, and convincing and accepting it, the reality that we have to change it. I think people are kind of reluctant also about the economic aspect. Yeah. Frankly speaking, all the you know research shows that there is a there is an enormous amount of economic prosperity. Yes. We are not good because the fact is, the fact of the matter is that if you look at the increase in the number of population and the increased amount of energy consumption that is required, the current level of energy from the fossil fuel is not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. So what do you need? You need to massively inject into the into the market. There should so be there's another no, plan. Exactly. Yeah, there's yeah. no other way. So that is the, the renewable is the way to inject that is readily available. Mm. So why do you, you know, invest in extracting uh -huh. further? Keep it increased massively on the renewables, which will at least give you uh, some breathing space. Amazing. Okay. So I, I hope that is the way forward. Nice. And, and the last question is, do you think what is done in co-op is enough? Or do you think there needs to be more it's it's quite an obvious Lovely. question. I think uh, it is not enough. Uh -huh. We we talk a lot, but the action is is very very slow. Uh -huh. So there sh should be more. There has to be a speeding action. Amazing. Well, I thank you so much With for this conversation. Pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramdad Abdullah. I appreciate it. It's yeah. my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure.